Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 7, Infectious Disease. This is video number 14 and we're going to have a look at immunity. So in this video we're going to talk a little bit about how the immune system responds after primary exposure to a pathogen including innate and acquired immunity and to extend this onto how that might change uh, with secondary exposure. So we want you to be able to define the term immunity, we want you to contrast innate and acquired immunity and also to explain changes in responses to the immune system to a second exposure of a previously encountered pathogen. So what we want to do now is just to review what we already know about immunity and then perhaps extend that on a little bit. So we know that we have non-specific immunity. This is the same as innate immunity and is basically uh, going to involve both the first and the second line of defense against disease. So together we have uh, the skin and mucous membranes, so physical and chemical barriers. We also have phagocytosis carried out by certain types of white blood cells. We have inflammation, uh, we have fever and the complement system, all of which are part of our first and second lines. These are innate and non-specific responses. But if pathogens are able to get through those two those first two lines of defense, then they come to the specific or the acquired or sometimes the adaptive immune system. And this is because this is a response to the presence of particular types of pathogens or particular types of stimuli that have created a specific response. We know in these specific responses that we can have one of uh, two or even both of these two responses working together. The humoral response or the anti-mediated response, which is the response that we see coordinated by the B cells, and the cell-mediated response, which comes from the T cells. Both of these are types of lymphocytes. Both of these associated with memory. And in fact, it's the memory that's going to be an important component as we look at the different types of immunity and how it can change on secondary exposure. So why does this system work so well? Well, it works so well because memory cells circulate for a long time, particularly those B cells, those ones that can clone themselves into plasma cells and release large quantities of antibodies. And this is really important because if the same pathogen infects the body again, the B cells are already there on hand. They'll respond very quickly, and it means we can produce large amounts of specific antibodies in a very short period of time. So a secondary exposure can be both faster and stronger than our primary exposure. It's also one of the reasons why we often don't suffer, um, what am I call is we might not suffer the symptoms um, from the same infection twice. So we may well get the same infection twice, but because our system has already encountered it and we already know the plan, we can put that plan into place much quicker and therefore um, attack the pathogen very, very quickly. So despite its rapid rate of reproduction, we're still on the front foot. Memory T cells survive for a long time as well, but they're part of triggering that whole team-based immune response. So remember that the T cells will differentiate into uh, T helper cells, uh, the killer T cells or the cytotoxic uh, T cells, suppressor T cells, as well as these memory cells. So you've again got cloning happening, specialization, particular cells, some chemicals that are going to be released as well that are going to trigger uh, additional and supportive responses from the whole immune system. Now this is a, an elegant and beautiful system, but it does have its um, problems. It does have its occasional failures. We know that there are some people who are particularly uh, allergic to certain types of um, substances or foods, and sometimes those uh, allergic reactions can be very severe and anaphylactic. And this is really when the body's just going into overdrive. A particular um, pathogen is uh, triggering some sort of a response or a particular antigen is, is triggering a certain response and the body's just in hyperdrive. It's just going right over the top. 
Um, so simple allergies, lots of sneezing, hay fever, that sort of thing that happens um, a lot of the time during uh, early spring can be just one example and um, a, a less extreme example of hypersensitivity. Autoimmune is another one where the cells are um, of the own body are being recognized as um, non-self and therefore the immune system is actually attacking itself and we call these autoimmune diseases and arthritis is one example of that. There can even be problems associated with cancer, the growth of cells, the abnormally rapid growth of cells, and we'll look at cancer uh, separately in one of our future modules. Um, but the fact that the body doesn't recognize these cells that are growing at an unreasonably large rate and destroy them all is also telling us that cancers, once they get hold in our bodies, are things that we, our own bodies have trouble dealing with and certainly um, uh, beating. Now we do know that both the B cells and the T cells are part of the immune system, part of the immune response. We also know that they both are, are associated with memory cells. We know that the B cells are chemical in nature. Their uh, response is to secrete antibodies. And if we were talking about the T cells, we would think that they're more biological and their response is more about um, a team work with different cells having specific roles and yet they work together. There is an interaction between the uh, B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes so that the system is efficient. It's not fighting itself to attack the same antigen but it's doing it in the most efficient way. Sometimes these helper T cells that we've talked about that are released different types of chemicals can specifically stimulate the B cells and the T cells to be cloning in order to increase the size and the speed of the response against a particular pathogen. So I want to talk very quickly about two um, alternate ways to look at immunity. And, and the two ways are passive immunity and active immunity. And this is going to lead us into a discussion later on around vaccination and the purpose of that. But the first one we want to look at is passive immunity. Now, passive immunity is when one individual gives antibodies to another. So this is the, this is the response chemical, not the trigger chemical, but the response chemical. Because it's a response chemical, it can only be short term. It can be naturally passive or artificially passive. So I could um, receive some of these uh, antigens from my mother when I was a child, either in utero or during breastfeeding. But I can also receive an injection from someone perhaps who's been infected with a particular um, virus, for example. They've already made some antibodies and so I can uh, that their blood can be uh, taken and the uh, particular antibodies isolated and then those transferred into me. So that would be artificially passive. Um, having them passed on from my, my mother would be naturally passive. So we do find things like um, babies in utero receiving antibodies via the placenta or through, as I said, breastfeeding uh, and artificially passive immunities from uh, gamma globulin injections from antibodies being transferred from one individual who's already made them to another individual who has not. Now the problem with passive immunity is it is short-lived. It's We're not making the response in our own bodies, we're just getting a bit of a top-up. Active immunity is when we actually do it ourselves, when we produce our own antibodies. And because we do it ourselves, it's much longer lasting. Our body knows the recipe. Our cells know which uh, particular antibody goes with which particular antigen, and it makes it much more efficient in trying to um, take on a particular pathogen. Now we can again acquire active immunity either naturally or artificially. Now natural uh, active immunity is when uh, you get exposed to a particular pathogen and your body produces a response. Now, for a lot of, uh, and we've, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, children and their levels of hygiene, whether they're being exposed to certain types of pathogens to allow their system to create antibodies and build up their immunity, uh, or whether we try and protect them as much as possible and not expose them to too much. Of course, there are certain types of pathogens which you just don't want to. Um, go through the process of building your own antibodies up because the pathogen can be particularly virulent. It can uh, create very serious symptoms. Uh, it can be very easily passed on. A number of different reasons why you might not want to go down the natural uh, 
active immunity route. So if you don't, what's the other option? Well, the other option is vaccination. Vaccination is basically an artificial dose of a particular trigger. So this isn't the same as injecting you with antibodies. This is now effectively injecting you with the antigen. Now, there's a couple of ways of, of which that can happen, and we'll deal with that when we look at vaccination later on. But what it's trying to do is it's trying to stimulate your body to produce antibodies that are specific for that particular pathogen, which means if you did encounter it later on in its full strength version, your body would already have some antibodies ready to go. Your cells would already, uh, the memory cells would already be there, and you'd be able to have that response much quicker. The little background picture here is uh, a picture showing smallpox. And smallpox is one of these diseases that we think we've actually eradicated through vaccination. And, uh, and I think one of the reasons why there's a lot of debate around vaccination is that for a lot of us, COVID notwithstanding, we've been uh, separated by some generations from some of these very serious childhood diseases. And so we just don't always know exactly how bad it was uh, when, when young people contracted these particular diseases. So two ways for active immunity, uh, natural and artificial. Finally, sometimes you see a graph like this and it's useful for you to be able to reproduce it and or explain what's going on. So this just gives you a little bit of a time frame over what's happening to the concentration of antibodies in your blood. So there may be next to none the first time you are exposed to a particular um, pathogen. There's, there's lots and lots of different B cells running around the body um, with a range of different antibodies available. But until they are triggered, there's no cloning. Once they are triggered, though, once a pathogen has entered uh, the body, then it will uh, potentially be, say, uh, gobbled up by a macrophage who will then uh, display the antigens on the surface, and those will um, trigger a response uh, from an antibody uh, being carried in a B cell. Then the cloning starts. So you can see that the response um, is a reasonably rapid one. It's a reasonably steep curve, uh, and it reaches a certain peak. Uh, at which stage has probably reached the saturation point where it's now dealing effectively with the pathogen. And, um, and because the numbers of the pathogen are now decreasing, then the response starts to tail off a little bit. Uh, now, what happens if you then are re-exposed? So if you then have a second exposure to the same pathogen, well, now you'll notice, first of all, we're not starting from zero. We've got some memory cells in there. So the memory cells are already present, already have the correct antibody. When they are triggered, the clonal response is much more rapid. So you can see how the second graph is much steeper it's also much higher. It rises to a uh, greater maxima. So it's able to produce a much quicker, much stronger response on that secondary uh, exposure to what we did in the primary response. And of course, this is the principle behind how vaccinations work. Because if you have your vaccine here, and then you have your actual exposure here, then by the time you get to the real exposure, your vaccine has already triggered a response. You already have these antibodies. Uh, you already have these memory uh, B cells in there and the whole system is ready to go. This has been, a, again, a, a, another long one, but there's a lot of really complicated um, concepts that are part of the immune system, the defense against disease and immunity. And it's worth um, revisiting a couple of times just to make sure that you've got all these key concepts set before you move on. But as always, we'll have a look at them in class. Thanks for watching.